so one of the things that you will probably realize now is that by adding positions to the index of chapter 1 we will be greatly increasing the size of the index because now we are recording not just a single doc id value but for that doc id value we are also recording an entire list of positions at which a term appears in uh, w within that document now again we can use compression techniques to uh, compress the postings lists in a positional index and we'll talk about some compression techniques when we come to chapter 5 but in spite of compression techniques we are going to get a substantial increase in the size of the index but as always it's it's the power and usefulness of phrase and proximity queries which necessitates that we need to work with a, a larger index size it, we can't say i'm not going to uh, build a positional index because it's you know it's it's, it's just going to take up too much space well then somebody else will build it and if they are able to serve their users better then you know their company will be more successful so it's often what users want that determines with you know uh, what exactly you need to implement because users find phrase and proximity queries useful we will need to expand the index and handle such queries here's here's an example to give you some idea of how large the index is now going to become since we need an entry for uh, every occurrence of a term within a document not just every presence of a term in a document the index size is now going to depend on the document size if you have a very very long document with many terms in it then you know that document is going to appear repeatedly in the postings list for some of those terms because some of those terms are going to appear many times in that document now an average web page has about a thousand terms but there are certain kinds of documents which are very very long which have a hundred thousand terms now consider a term t which appears on an average with a frequency of 0.1% that is it appears once every thousand words so this term will appear on an average once on an average web page but because documents like this have 100000 words the term t will occur in them how many times 100000 times this frequency of 0.1% which is 100 times so if you look at the postings so let's say this term t appears in a document which is an average web page in that case you're going to have a uh, you know one one single posting for that document you know let's say the document size is 1000 we'll have one posting and we'll have exactly one positional posting within it within that posting because the term occurred only once but if you take the document that had a length of 100000 there's going to be one single posting for that document containing the doc id but within that posting there will be a hundred positional postings corresponding to the hundred occurrences of this term within that document so you can see that um if you just had the standard inverted index okay, let me call it the index from chapter 1 we would have just had a single posting 
for both of these documents. But now when we add a positional index, this will still remain one because we still have one single position at which that term is occurring. But now we are going to have a hundred occurrences of the term in the second document. The length of this posting is just gone by a term. So as a rule of thumb, yeah, now it's better. As a rule of thumb, by adding positional information to an index, you're going to make the index about two to four times larger. Okay, these are this is, these are empirical rules of thumb observed from indexes that are built in practice. If you build a non-positional index on a corpus and then you build a positional index, the latter index is going to be about two to four times larger. And the size of the positional index in terms of disk space will be about one third to half of the size of the corpus, the original corpus of documents from which you are building the index. And of course this holds for English-like languages. For example, China, you know, uh, if you look at languages like Chinese, we saw that uh, it has its own issues because detecting word or sentence boundaries itself is a very very hard problem and we're going to see that uh, uh, l later on in this lecture that um, we're going to look at another kind of index which will be used for languages like that but for English like languages these are the empirical observations if your corpus size is uh, something the, pos the size of the positional index you built from that corpus will be about one third to half of that. And the size of a positional index is going to be two to four times larger than the size of the index we saw in chapter one, a non-positional index. Now the two schemes that we saw for answering phrase queries, the byword index and the positional index, these two schemes can actually be combined into a hybrid approach. For example, we could keep a positional index for most of the queries. So most of the phrase queries could be handled using the positional index that we just saw. But certain queries that are very, very popular, certain phrase queries that are very, very popular like Michael Jackson, Britney Spears and so on, you don't want to repeat the, you know, the, the the, the intersection operation on the positional index again and again. If you know that these phrase queries are pretty popular, you could just collect these popular queries, these popular phrase queries into a separate byword index and just look up that byword index if you get a, a phrase query that's one of the popular ones. If it's not one of the popular ones, you can go and look into a positional index. So you can have both uh, uh, you know, a mini byword index storing only the popular phrase queries and a positional index that will answer all the other phrase queries. So the byword index here could store popular phrase queries. That's one of the reasons, uh, that's one of the kind of phrase queries that you may want to store in the mini byword index here. Another kind of query that you may want to store in the byword index is very expensive phrase queries. Even if they don't, even if these particular phrase queries don't occur too many times, if they, if the operation of calculating the answer on a position in a positional index is very uh, costly, then you may want to pre-calculate the answer and store it in a byword index. For example, a query like the who. Both these words by themselves are very, very common words and so you're going to have these huge postings for both the terms and within, you know, 
uh, within a document also these terms would have appeared many many times and so the the postings list operation for intersection is going to be pretty expensive so you can store queries like this also in a separate byword index there are some other hybrid approaches uh, or or a hybrid ex or or extensions to the technique that we've seen for example there's one technique by williams um i'm not going to discuss that but basically it uses up about 25% more space than a positional index but it executes uh, it answers the queries in about one fourth of the time that a positional index does but again you don't need to know this it's called the next word index and uh, this is just for your information that there are more complicated techniques that uh, can can give you better performance so this is the uh, combination scheme where we combine the byword index solution with the positional index solution to get the best of both this ends chapter 2 are there any questions how did you find this chapter was it interesting boring <laughs>